So I got me a Sony FX30 a few months ago. And I got to be honest with you, I love the camera. I love using it. I've been putting it through its paces. I really, really, really love this camera. But there was a couple of things I didn't consider before I bought this camera. Check this out. So I've been using the Sony a6600, the a6400, and the Sony ZV-E10 for the past, I want to say, four or five years, three or four years, three or four years, right? Been using it exclusively, right? Smaller, uh, 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 older chipset, right? It was a nice entry-level APS-C camera, right? Editing with that was a breeze because the file sizes weren't that big. But then here comes the Sony FX30. A beast of an APS-C camera. Top of the line. You're not going to find a better APS-C camera than the Sony FX30 with all the features that is packed into this camera. You're not going to find it. Not at least not at least until up until this point of me recording this video. You're not going to find it. But there was a couple of things I did not consider when ordering that camera. And one of those is the size of the files. I wanted to get more into 4K recording, right? So I got this camera, started recording in 4K, and I realized that my current memory cards, my V30 cards, were not sufficient enough to record on it. I mean, it did basic, but if I wanted to really go hard with the recording, it wasn't good enough. It'll get me by in the 1080p, but if I wanted to go 4K, I needed a faster card. And what I found is those cards are so expensive. I can't, like, I was like, yo, I never paid this much for a memory card. But if I want to take my video creation seriously, I had to. So here I have some V90 cards that I had to look up so that I can upgrade my V30, my slow memory cards. Now I'm looking at the price and they're more expensive. I never spent this much on memory cards, but I had to do what I needed to do. So these are V90 cards. You see it's $129, $130 for 128 gigs. And that's not a bad price. Double it though, then you're paying a lot of money for it. Uh, here we have $130 for the SanDisk Extreme Pro V90 cards. You got to make sure that you look for the V90 sign on the cards. They come with uh, the settings of V30, V60, and V90. You want to make sure you get the V90 card. And uh, there's other brands outside of SanDisk. Uh, I had went and I bought the dual uh, pro grade ones right there for $260. So I got two for $260, two 128. Actually, I got four, but I got the two pack for of 128 gigabytes for uh, $260. And I bought two of those so that I have a bunch of them. Like I need to get this. I'm taking it seriously. So here's an expense that I had to pay out to make sure that I was using my uh, camera to the best of its ability. And the thing is, with these cards, you're not even using it to the best of the abilities because there are two 4K settings, well, one HD setting, the Cine I E I and the HD EI. You can't even shoot with the V90 card. And if you are going to shoot that setting, you're going to need this. The Sony FX Express Type A card. And look at this price. For 160 gigabytes, you are paying a whopping... $696 for 320 gigabytes. You're paying 1,000, well, pretty $1,100. Here it is people, right? Oh, this comes with two. My apologies. You're getting two for that price. Two for that price. You're getting two for the, for almost $700. You're getting two 320 gigabytes, which is uh, 640 gigabytes of, you know, space of, of SD card for $1,100. Just for memory for you to use the camera to the fullest of its potential, right? I didn't consider that before buying this camera. I have not picked this up yet because I cannot spend this right now. My wife will kill me. So I'm not spending that right now, <laughs> right? But it is what it is. Like I have to buy what I need to buy at the moment right now to use the camera for what I need for it right now. So absolutely, it's going to come a time. When I am going to need that camera, I am. I mean, the, the memory card, I'm going to get it eventually, just not right now. And another thing I needed to consider 
was my current workspace. Prior to me getting the Sony FX30, I was using a pretty decent um, i7 PC with a terabyte SD card and 24 gigabytes of RAM. With that, though, those numbers, you would think, Dre, what's the problem? Like you're editing HD footage. You should be, you know, flying through that. But I found that even when I was editing HD footage, even for some 4K footage with my Sony ZV-E10 or A6600, I found that it was stuttering all through the timeline when I was scrubbing through the timeline on Premiere Pro. It was. It, it, it wasn't the most happy experience editing, but I just love editing. So, But, but it just wasn't like the fastest or, or most convenient way to do it using that machine. And now when I when I started editing with the Sony FX30 using that same machine, it was torturous. It really was. So I need to upgrade my machine. I needed to upgrade my machine, right? And I'm a PC guy. The only Apple product I ever had and owned was an iPad. And it was only because I needed to use it for school. And it was the real base model iPad. I still have the iPad. I only had that, right? Not, I'm not an Apple user. I, I, I never used an Apple product that, that much. Just, I was always PC or Android. But then the M1 Mac Mini came out. Well, it came out like two years ago. But then after I was using this machine and it wasn't working that well, I needed to upgrade. Do I pay thousands and thousands of dollars for uh, a beefed up PC editing machine? Or do I go with the M1 Mac Mini that every single content creator out there says is an amazing, inexpensive option to create content with. So I did that. I went to the Apple website and I got me an M1 Mac Mini. Here's the thing. I ordered it and it came in Monday, I think, February 16th. You know what happened February 17th, Tuesday? They announced the M2 Mac Mini or the M2 chip max. So I returned that and I'm waiting for my M2 Mac to come in. But here's the thing. I needed to upgrade it. And what I appreciated about Mac now, which I didn't like before, was that they have inexpensive Macs now. Take a look at this. We have the Mac mini starting at $599. That's the M2 Mac mini. Okay. Eight core GPU, ten core, uh, eight core CPU, ten core GPU, and up to twenty four gigabytes of unified memory, and you can uh, get up to I think two terabytes of SSD hard drive, which I would not recommend. So what I did was, I need to upgrade my machine, so I bought the M2 Mac Mini with twenty four gigabytes of RAM and the base two hundred and fifty six gigabyte SSD drive because I already have. SSD drives that I'm going to connect with it. So I needed to upgrade my machine. So I had to upgrade my SD cards and I needed to upgrade my machines for me to just get what I wanted to get out of the Sony FX30. The Sony FX30 is not like the other APS-C cameras out there. It's not. This is a, 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 a beefed up APS-C cinema camera. So if you really want to use it to the, to the fullness of its potential, you got to spend out extra money, which I had to do so I can use this camera to the fullness of the potential that I need it for. So I didn't consider those things before getting the FX30. Now, do I not recommend you getting the FX30? Absolutely not. If you got the money for it and you have APS-C lenses, get this camera stat. Get it now. But if you're going to get the camera, you need to consider the extra cost that's going to accrue when you get this camera. That means that if you don't have the proper SD cards to use this camera, you're not going to it's not going to be able to work the way you want it to work. And if you're using an older machine with the bigger files that this camera creates, you won't be able to do video editing, so you're going to have to upgrade that as well. So, consider those things before you get the FX30. But don't get the FX30 because you are considering those things. Get it anyway. Just make sure that you're considering those things, all right? All right. <laughs> Peace.